in all, you have to remember though that there are more good people than bad people in this world. The bad people are just very loud, very annoying, and they demand a lot of attention. Good people mostly just keep their head down and mind their own business and get the job done. While the other people out there are screaming and screeching in the streets about things they don't understand. A lot of the time, my own opinion though. So we're in, uh, where are we make it up to? Just before Black River Falls, Wisconsin. I stopped at the rest area here and uh, we're gonna go just down the road here in the next vlog tomorrow and get a coffee from the Black River Falls Flying J. And then we're pretty much a day's drive from home. 973 kilometers and 862 kilometers from Canada. That's about eight and a half, nine hours of driving. Uh, maybe a little more than that with traffic. Gotta go through Minneapolis yet. Hopefully the traffic won't be too bad. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button and share it with your friends. Cause if you like the videos, chances are you probably know someone else who might like it too. We're trying to get the channel up to hundred thousand subscribers. It's been a goal we've been working towards since the beginning. Uh, 2011 when we started and we're very excited to be less than 10,000 away so if you want to help us get there the best way you can help is by sharing the videos and subscribing 28 liters per hundred kilometers is what we averaged yesterday my best day yet in this truck I say okay Google 28 liters per hundred kilometers two miles per gallon 28L per 100 kilometers is approximately 8.401 miles per gallon. Almost eight and a half miles per gallon yesterday. Woo! That's the best I've ever gotten out of this truck. I know people who don't know how much fuel trucks use, they're like their jaws on the floor right now. That's actually really good for this truck. The new trucks, you can probably get up over 10. With this truck, uh, I've been struggling with like six all winter, but that's because I did a lot of idling through the night. That's because I drove faster. Now that I've slowed down to an average about 60 miles an hour or fifth, like 95 kilometers an hour, somewhere in there, uh, I've actually saved myself a lot of fuel just by slowing down to 60 miles an hour. I've saved myself about $50 per day. And yesterday I saved myself a, a ton. Because 20, 28 liters per, uh, let's say I would have averaged 38 liters, 10 liters more per 100 kilometers. I drove 639 kilometers yesterday. So I know I'm speaking in metric. I'm sorry, Americans. Bear with me. Bear with me. 639 divided by, you know, 100. Because every, every 100 kilometers, I would have burned 38 liters. I would have burned 539 times. Let's do uh, Canadian prices. So like $695 of fuel? That doesn't seem right. 639 divided by 100. So 6.3 times we burnt. We would have burnt 38 liters. So 38 times 6.39. Ah, uh, there we go. 244 liters is what I would have burnt yesterday. And it would have cost me approximately $313. Since I saved, we did 639 over 100 times 28. I only burnt 178 liters, which only cost me about $230. So 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and $80. Over $50 I saved yesterday just by taking her easy. I'm sorry, I followed that one. Whoa, right over your head. I tried to get through that quickly because I've already talked about this with you in past vlogs and I need to get going. So I've already checked everything out, done the pre-trip, I am good to go. Another big change obviously is that I'm not idling through the night anymore at all. Continue 210 kilometers. Uh, I got my bunk heater fixed a while back if you remember from my vlog so I can keep my cab warm through the night. The weather right now is obviously a lot nicer because it's springtime, so I don't have to keep the engine warm or keep myself warm as much. So that also saves me approximately $30 a night. So between the fuel savings of just slowing down and not idling through the night, I'm saving over $100 a day. A day. That's how much we burn in fuel in these trucks and how much little differences can make a difference. That's why you have all these big mega carriers, you know, 
putting skirts on their trailers and uh, you know covers on their wheel hubs or on their wheel rims sorry anything to just get a slight edge to get a little bit better fuel economy but here this guy coming up beside us here he's got the the skirts on the side of his trailer underneath his trailer you'll see it right here see those actually save quite a bit of fuel and stops the air from circling around the, the truck and underneath the trailer and getting caught up in the trailer axles. I believe those skirts are mandatory now on all new trailers or a new airflow system. Doesn't necessarily have to be the skirts, but it has to be a, an, a, a different airflow. So I know our van trailers have a little bit of a different setup, but either way, it saves a lot of money. Those axles on the trailer create a lot of drag. And I know, like I mentioned earlier, that speaking in metric probably confuses and probably frustrates a lot of you Americans. Please just bear with me. I know you guys don't speak metric like the rest of the world. I just don't speak... What do you, what do you call that system? The, they call it just a standard system, but if you think about it, they're the only ones, along with like one or two other countries in the world, that use that system of like miles and inches and Fahrenheit and stuff. Only a few countries in the world use that, so that's not really standard. It's, I guess I'd call it American. I don't speak American in that way, but I have nothing against it. I understand it and I can convert it with a calculator easily. It's just for me, metric makes so much more sense. It's all based on even numbers, and uh, that's what I grew up with. And it's difficult for me to tell, judge distance when I just hear a number in miles, like 238 miles. Huh? How far? How far is that? How long is it going to take to go 236 miles? But if you say 236 kilometers, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, just over two hours to get there. Right? I guess it all just depends what we're uh, raised up on. I try to do the, the, what do you call it, the difference myself and tell you guys. It's just I don't always have a calculator. I, I mean, I have a calculator on hand. I just don't always have the time to bust out all the conversions. That's the word I'm looking for. But you guys know what I'm talking about, right? You know what I'm talking about. Like one mile. It's 5,280 feet. What? Why? Why did that become a mile? 5,280 feet. Why not just make it 5,000 feet, right? And you can't change it now. But one kilometer is... 1,000 meters. So much easier. Even, even numbers. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. The freezing point of water is 0 degrees Celsius. The freezing point of water is, what, 32 degrees Fahrenheit? And the boiling point is, I don't even know, in Fahrenheit. <laughs> I don't know. Some odd number, random number. That's what I mean by it just makes more sense to me. It's not that one system is better than the other. It all depends what you're raised on and what comes easier and more natural to you. For me, that's just metric. I guess it must be the beginning of cottage season again. The I-94 coming into Wisconsin here, going through Wisconsin, is packed full of vehicles with Illinois plates. I guess everybody's going to their cabins to open them up for the summer. It is the weekend. It's Friday, right? No, it's Saturday today. Yeah. Oh, you'd think that the, the highways must have been really busy yesterday. Unless if everybody just goes to their cabin Saturday. But in summertime, you'll notice if you come through here on the weekends, it is jam-packed. It almost should be three lanes in each direction coming through here up to Wisconsin Dells because of all the Illinois traffic that comes up here on the weekend. And this is one of our main routes going back to Winnipeg in Canada, coming from the eastern U.S. or Midwest. So there's a lot of Canadian, a lot of Manitoba and western Canadian trucks on this road all the time, right? So we're on the, being on this road that often you notice these trends. During the week, <coughs> during the week there's hardly any traffic. It's beautiful. Weekend though, just a parade of cars. I know it looks like there's no one in front of me right now because I'm going slower than most people that want to get around me. There's just a steady stream as far back as I can see. I'm 
looking forward to getting home also. Tomorrow's our family gathering and uh, the rest of the week, just spending time with Britt, getting ready for her and helping her to be ready to get her uh, class one license. Hopefully we can uh, make some progress and study together and make sure she'll be ready for it. I believe she's going in for her test on Thursday. Three Montana Highway Patrol vehicles here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. They're a little ways out of your jurisdiction, my friends. wonder what they're doing. They passed me before, too. I guess they all fueled up and got back on the road and passed me again. Montana Highway Patrol. What would they be doing out here? They were actually... They passed me in Wisconsin. I'm wondering if maybe they bought these vehicles off another police department, maybe in Wisconsin or Illinois, and got all the decals put on the sides of the vehicles there, and now they're just... They flew people out to pick them up and drive them back. That's the only thing I can think of. Why would they be so far away from Montana? Huh. But yes, Minneapolis, we're, we're doing very good with fuel. I know I keep talking about that. I'm sort of obsessed with it right now. We are down to 27 liters per 100 kilometers. Up closer to, what, 9 or 10 miles per gallon? U.S. gallon? Very happy with that today. So, uh, 732 kilometers, 7 hours of driving to our year. Well, a little more than 7 hours now. About 8 hours. And I have to stop for my mandatory half hour break somewhere down here. I'm thinking maybe... I wanted to make it to Fargo or Grand Forks. I don't think I'm going to get that far. But uh, we'll stop somewhere where we can fuel at the same time. We only have to stop once. Don't want to waste any time on the way home. All right, uh, Miss Mrs. Soccer Mom here to my right. There you go. You're speeding up. Can you just, if you want to speed up, can you just maintain that speed, please? There's a motorcycle. There's a motorcycle out here. That's the first motorcycle of the season that I've seen. Awesome in Minneapolis. That means spring is officially here. Good to see that. Good to see. Okay, finally I can move over. People, stop passing me on my right and let me move over. Perfect. I bet you anything that minivan up ahead is going to decide to slow down in about 30 seconds. <laughs> I was going to fuel in Grand Forks, which is on the way back to Canada, uh, about an hour and a half north of here, but I have to take my half hour break before I get there, for one. And for two, the fuel is more expensive there. According to the app, the My Pilot app, fuel here is 279.9 per gallon or 280 per gallon, and in Grand Forks it was $3.07 per gallon. So, you on my business. I don't know why there would be such a large price difference in the same state, in the same location, the same corporation, whatever, same truck stop, only like an hour and a half away from each other. But maybe it's just because Grand Forks is further away from everything. I don't know. I don't know. But whatever the reason, we'll just pull in here and fuel her up, grab some go-go juice, and we're going to head home. This truck looks like it's crooked in front of me, eh? I wonder if that's just the pavement. It's probably just the pavement underneath it. It's got Ontario plates. Looks like we got quite a bit of flooding here already. This is the Pembina Valley uh, Red River Basin. So the Red River in the U.S. is known as Red River of the North, but in Canada it's just the Red River. It's the only river in North America that flows north. So all of this water that you see here, and now there's not as much here, the river is going further off to our right. All of the water coming from here, it all runs into the Red River and that all runs up to Canada, into Manitoba. It runs straight through Winnipeg. So Winnipeg has built a, a floodway so that when it does get really high like it will this spring because we had a lot of snow this winter, most of the water is diverted around the city to prevent the city from flooding. But that does sacrifice the flood basin, which is south of Winnipeg, between Winnipeg and the United States border. And that floods up because the way that they redirect the river is they block it. They, they have floodway gates is what they call it. And it's pretty much a man-made dam that dams up the river 
and then it pushes it over the banks into the floodway. And then it goes around Winnipeg that way. It's one of the, at the time when they built it, it was the largest engineering project in the world or something like that. It's a huge floodway. Look it up sometime, the Winnipeg floodway. It was one of the largest man-made canals or floodways in the world for a long time. I'm sure there's bigger ones by now. But all of this water is heading up to Manitoba. And then from there it drains into uh, Lake Winnipeg. And then Lake Winnipeg drains into the Hudson's Bay up north into the ocean. So back in the day when Canada was under ice, because you know people like to say and try to convince you that climate change is this new thing that just started happening. No, it's been happening for a long time. My property used to be under a mile of ice. So I'm kind of glad the climate changed because it raised my property value quite a bit and I'm able to do a lot more stuff with my, my property seeing as it's exposed and not under ice. But at one point there was ice and it slowly started melting further and further north as the earth warmed up. And uh, the last part of it was blocking off the Hudson's Bay. There was a huge ice dam at the Hudson's Bay. And all of this water down south would melt and it would flow towards the north where it would get dammed up by this huge ice dam. That ice dam made all of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, parts of Alberta, all of this area here that we're in here that we're driving on, it made it into a huge lake. This used to be a massive lake. And once there, it kept warming up and that ice dam finally melted and broke, all of that fresh water flowed into the oceans. And many people think that that's how that was that huge event where the ocean levels rose by like 14 feet in a matter of what, days? So before that ice dam broke, there was like the United Kingdom was connected to Europe. There was land between there. And then as soon as that ice dam broke, this massive lake that was covering most of North America just gushed into the Hudson's Bay and raised the ocean levels. And it uh, turned the UK into an island. And that's one of the reasons you can find many lost cities underwater along the coastlines of ancient ancient civilizations that was all the water from here all that ice that melted so the ice has been melting for a very long time it's, it's nothing new that's why I get very upset when my government wants to steal my money and scare people into thinking that yes, taking money out of my wallet and putting it in the government bank account will somehow magically save the planet. Yeah, like they don't take enough already. I, I barely got anything left for myself. You want my last couple of bucks? Fine, there you go, but I'm gonna fight you on it. You know what I mean? But yeah, anyways, my whole story there was that all of this that you're looking at here, this is why I have the camera facing forward and not at me while I'm talking. All of this was under a massive lake that was melted glaciers. And that water is still present in the Great Lakes, Lake Superior, Michigan, and uh, b -b 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 what's the other one, Lake Ontario? The Great Lakes east of here, and Lake Manitoba and Lake Winnipeg in the province of Manitoba. That's all left over from that. Pretty neat. Oh, the earth has changed so much. And it's kind of scary knowing that, yes, the earth is still changing. The climate is changing. No one's denying that. We don't know what to expect. All we know is it's been happening for a very long time. And there's nothing we can do to stop it. At least nothing I think we can do. I don't know. Can we control the weather? Not yet, eh? But look at all this water. Wow. This water is going to end up in the Hudson's Bay in the ocean. Probably a few months. I don't know how long it takes to get there from here, but that's where it's going. I mean, one of the reasons that here in like North Dakota, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, the reason that there's such fertile soil here and there's great farming here right now is that because this used to be a giant lake bed and we're just enjoying the benefits of living on soil that's been drained of the lake that created it and all the sediments got left behind. I don't know, I'm interested in history and stuff like that. I 
I like to know history. You gotta know where you came from. You gotta know what happened. You gotta know what's going on. Otherwise, people will try to revise it and they'll try to make up a new history and convince you that that's true. You gotta know when people are lying and when they're full of, full of it. I don't know everything, but I'm always open to learn. That's the thing. I'm, I'm always open to learn and be corrected if I'm wrong. But very often people will try to correct you when they have no clue what they're talking about themselves. So it's a free for all out there. That's what the internet is for. Go and research it yourself because everyone has their own opinion. Everyone with a belly button has an opinion. We have a world of knowledge at our fingertips. Go check it out. We're back in Canada. Another hour or so to our yard. And then head home from there. I'm hoping to be home before midnight. Chevy. Chevy. Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Boy. I am really sorry, guys. I'm just putting together the rest of this vlog now, and the last little bit of this clip didn't turn out it uh, must have been corrupted or something but pretty much I just said good night and please subscribe to the channel we made it home had a good day the next vlog will be us uh, well I'm home for a couple of days now we have a doctor's appointment coming up but I don't want to spoil it I hope you tune in tomorrow for that vlog sorry that the end of this vlog sort of didn't turn out the way I wanted it to talk to you soon guys take care